25. Never been kissed. Never had a boyfriend. Barely can I say I've been on a real date. And I mean, obviously, <laughs> I'm a virgin. What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. It's Miss GCH here, also known as, well really known as Gabrielle, also known as Gaby. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome. From the jump, I'm just gonna let you know that this is um, the sparkling water ice. It's not wine. I wish I had some wine, but I don't. But I thought it'd be cute to just add to the little ambiance of our girl chat today because y'all, today I am about to be open and transparent 100% for the first time on this platform and I'm so nervous about it. <laughs> I am so nervous, but we're just gonna do it. We're just gonna do it. So I do have my notes. My laptop is right down here because I just want to share my heart with you all. So I just wrote it down to make sure everything gets out today. But um, yeah, so let's just get into it guys. So you read the title. You read the title, which means the cat is officially out the bag. I am 20, well I'm 24. I'll be 25 in a few weeks, three weeks actually. Um, but yeah, I'm 25. I have never been kissed. Oh my god. Yeah, never been kissed. Never had a boyfriend. Never, I mean like barely can I say I've been on a real date. And I mean obviously, <laughs> I'm a virgin. Wow, okay, so I said that out loud on the camera to everyone. Cool. So, some people close to me assume certain parts of that, but they don't think like it's as deep as I've never been kissed. That is the truth. It's the truth of my lying to you. I wish I was lying to you <laughs> as far as the kissing part. Already with me just saying that, I know you're either one of two people. One, you're like super confused, like, wait, I don't get it. What the heck? That's one group of people that respond to me. And then the other group that responds to me is the kind of people who think like, after hearing that, you have me figured out and you kind of put me into a box based on what I've just told you. And so I want the opportunity to share with you guys um, my heart and my story behind this and just explain. So let me just say I'm being very transparent with you all today. I did not want to have this conversation and it has taken me so long to just come out and say it. Like, you've gotten bits and pieces and parts through some of my other videos which I'll link up here for you to go check out. And through various people and in various ways I feel like the Lord was calling me to like speak about this on my channel and use my platform to talk about this. But I was always like, God, this ain't none of their business. <laughs> like, why do I have to talk about this? And the other part is I always felt like an alien you guys like the older i get i just i feel like this alien that you know nobody i mean obviously somebody but like nobody has been through this or it just doesn't feel like anyone in my life understands relationships from my perspective because they've all experienced something at some point and just so you know how deep it is i was at this youth conference last summer and i was asked randomly to come up and sit on a relationship panel and so i go up and sit on this panel i'm like is he confused like maybe he thinks i'm in a relationship he doesn't know like i'm not in a relationship like why do you have me up here on this panel literally the entire panel was couples like married couples people who are about to get engaged like engaged couples it was just couples and it was me <laughs> I'll talk more about this but relationships are really an insecurity for me and so literally I just felt like my skin was like sweating like my insides were like on fire of just like I want to go sit down like I don't want to be up here I have no desire to be up here I don't have anything to contribute like this is dumb why am I up here and in a room full of like teenagers like no one be gonna relate to me talking about I'm 24 at the time 24 ain't never been kids ain't never had a boy like they're gonna be like girl what are you talking about like go sit down and so it really limited what I shared on that panel I was very nervous I really didn't share as much as I probably should have and but I do remember on the last day I was asked a question I answered I was like okay I'm gonna just throw it out there like I'm gonna try to overcome my insecurities and just tell a piece of it so I shared some piece of my story like a small I mean like a small part and some advice and felt really stupid about it felt really like nobody cares and then like two hours later two of the young girls um, came up to me actually at different times and just shared like you know I really relate with what you said like I'm experiencing that in school and that's my story too and I was just like okay God you funny like you, you trying to play a joke because you're trying to show me that my story actually does matter to somebody and that sharing my story will help somebody so it has taken since then so July till now for me to really be like okay I'm going to talk about this and relationships have been I, I think 
hoping this is a word for 2019 that like my experience with relationships is shifting in 2019 I don't know if it's turning 25 I don't know what it is but already I've had to deal with relationships and um, my experience with relationships has just been really in my face like literally every day of 2019 relationships have just been in my face really towards the end of 2018 like my story and my predicament of not being kids not having boyfriend and all this stuff has now shifted from being just a predicament to now it's like a wound in my life that like if anybody gets close to it it, it gets tender when someone tries to touch it i pull away because i'm like absolutely not but i'm getting ahead of myself i do want to point out the fact that um what really pulled me to talk about this today i was listening to the release series by michael todd from transformation church if you haven't heard that just stop what you're doing absolutely right now go over to itunes um to the podcast and listen to this series but he shared a clip just about us sharing our testimony in a world full of pressure for sex and relationships and you have to be married by this age you have to have this many kids for all those pressures that exist right now I think it's important for me to just show my face and say hey I'm here and tell my story so one more quick thing before I really dive into this I have to do some ground rules Okay, before I talk about this, since I'm being all open and transparent and sharing things that I just feel like ain't really none of y'all's business, even though it is because it's God's testimony that I'm supposed to share through me, through my life, but I need some ground rules, okay? And it's just three. The first one is please, and I mean please do not hop in the comments, y'all, and give me your well-intentioned, I'm sure, cliche. I promise you I can one-up you. I have heard every cliche from about middle school to, to probably yesterday. I've heard every cliche that exists. Oh, you're young. It's just not your time. God has a plan, which he does. But the right one just hasn't found you yet. And then the awkward ones where people start complimenting you and telling you you're beautiful anyway. And it's like, anyway, why is my beauty and my worth tied to my relationship status? So just let's just avoid that altogether. The second one is kind of like a joke, but low-key serious because it happens. Please refrain from sliding in my DMs with a picture of your cousin, brother, neighbor, classmate, co-worker and saying how you just feel like we're meant to be together and doing the awkward like hookup connection uh, middleman type thing. Let's not. Let's not. Okay, we can just. Not necessary. And then the third one is really like, please do not use this video as a reason to like feel bad for me like you don't have to feel bad for me y'all i i really am i'm okay i'm okay i'm alive i can survive without all of these things because i have and i have thrived um without these things for 25 years so like don't feel bad for me also doing the whole like people hear this and then they automatically start treating me like um a child in this area or the word innocent comes out and i just don't like that because it's like the pat me on the head like Oh, like little child, like no, I'm I'm a whole 25, like about to be a whole 25. Like just because I haven't experienced it doesn't mean I don't know about these things. Like, come on guys, I'm, I'm not a kid just because I haven't done certain things. So let's skip over the innocence thing as well. So with all that said, whew, that was quite an intro, but this is a big step for me. So all of what I just said was necessary. So let's get into it for real. So all of what I said in the beginning and multiple times is true. Yes, the title is true. No, this is not clickbait. No, this is not catfish. I literally joke that I am more virgin than Virgin Mary herself. <laughs> I mean, woo! But joking about my singleness has actually become a coping strategy. In elementary school, like I had crushes or whatever, or certain people got certain attention. And you know, if I ever mentioned it, I feel like mainly the kids really were like, oh, wait till middle school. Like when we get to middle school, like, you know, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, they're like, oh yeah, that's when everybody gets their booze and their, you know, typically first or second boyfriend, boyfriend. That's also when people start kind of like going on dates, typically like double dates or like with their parents or whatever. But like just getting that attention. And so everybody's like, wait till middle school. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Ooh, get to middle school. Oh my gosh, where he at? Where he at? Yeah, other people got that attention. Dates to the middle school dances. Dancing with people at uh, the middle school dances. I've never, oh, I should add that to the list. Never danced with a guy. Not like. There was this one little awkward situation at my sweet 16 where this the crush that I had, which I should not have had, 
tried to dance with me. It was it was so awkward. But like slow dance, no, never done it. So I'm sitting out, I'm sitting on the bleachers while everybody's getting that attention. And so I felt, you know, I'm sorry, but I'm like, okay, everybody's like high school. Don't worry about middle school, high school. High school is what's gonna happen. So I'm like, cool, high school, freshman year, boom, let's go. Mmm. Crushes here and there, sure, but like nothing really explicit and nothing obviously that turned into a relationship. Didn't end up kissing anybody, so I'm like, what? And they're like, no, nah, not freshman year, sophomore year. Sophomore year, nothing happens. No, nah, junior year, <laughs> I get to junior year. Okay, something better happen, I'm upperclassman now. Same old sad song. Then senior year, I'm like, okay, prom is coming up, like, I've never had a date to homecoming, like, none of this stuff, like, this is the moment. Like, I'm senior class president, like, this is all just supposed to be, like, a big moment. Ask me if I had one. Absolutely not. It still didn't happen. So then people are like, no, you know, high school, like, yeah, some people had it, but don't worry about it, college. College is the time. Like, you, this is when you find your own, blah, 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 get to college, I'm like, Freshman year, I was already aware, oh, ain't nothing happening. <laughs> like, I had high hopes, but going to a PWI, which is a predominantly white institution, like IU, the black community is so small. Literally, everybody was dating everybody. I said, no, thank you. I don't want no parts of it. So it still didn't happen then. And now here I am in my seventh year of college. I'm in grad school getting my PhD, and, you know, Things are kind of starting to happen, but I mean like just now starting to happen and even still they haven't happened yet. And so I say all that to say that like around probably senior year, definitely senior year, like around prom time is when I was like, oh, I have to change this narrative. Like so that I don't wallow and cry myself to sleep every night and like bawl my eyes out when all my friends are calling me about their booze and their dates and their this and their that and I don't have that. I had to like do something about it. so I would j start joking about like make jokes about my singleness or you know like somebody bring it up like I would find any way to just kind of brush over it like it wasn't a big deal and that kept me safe it kept my heart safe but I noticed now at this age that that strategy that tactic of pushing relationships away and the thought away and disconnecting that thought from me has literally started to hurt me and it's probably been hurting me for years but I'm just now really starting to recognize that that's actually turned into a negative thing like relationships became equated with disappointment like those two words were synonymous in my world especially because the one time where you know something did kind of get somewhat serious with someone where I thought like okay this it like this is great this might even like go all the way to marriage like oh look at me going child when I tell you <laughs> when I tell you not only was I disappointed by that situation but I was low-key embarrassed slash humiliated are the two words that are written all across like my journal around that situation like Lord not only have I not have a, had a bae all this time or a boo or a boyfriend ain't kiss nobody ain't nothing in my head waiting like a good little Christian girl should like doing everything what I thought was right that would equate to me getting a bay eventually, which is a whole separate video, such faulty thinking. But, you know, I'm like, Lord, I'm doing all this. And then not only does this just not work out, I am humiliated by this situation. I'm like, Lord, what the heck is this? Like, really, I was just like, at that point, what is the point? Absolutely, what is the point? Relationships equal disappointment in my book. And so relationships became this insecurity. I had my guard up about relationships, even though I knew I was worthy of relationships and love and all that stuff it began to feel like I wasn't and so it became like this sore spot just this really tough insecurity and y'all I became so comfortable in my singlehood it's honestly funny I've become so comfortable in it that like relationships and love and like all that is kind of like a fantasy for me and I feel like that's for a lot of people who have gone this long without this stuff like we know it exists, but a lot of my um, views of it are from TV and movies and, you know, my friends' um, situations or their relationships or engagements or marriages. Um, I've seen it for everybody else, but not for me. So it's like this fantasy idea. It's like I'm stuck in, like, the Prince Charming phase of just like that thing over there like that fantasy over there and I've become so comfortable in my fantasy that I'd rather dream it than go live it that's what I've come face to face with now at this stage of my life and noticing like even if relationships do get somewhere close to me or someone tries to approach me 
I'm like, oh, oh no, that's fine. Like, no, I don't need it in real life. Like, I'm, I'm good with the fantasy. The fantasy's fine. Me and the fantasy are, are, are cool. Like, I can marry whoever I want. He can look however I want. He can be the perfect person. And I'll just stick with my fantasy. Like, I'm realizing that I have built walls. I built walls up to God. If you've seen uh, that video, I talked about how I wouldn't even talk to God about it. Like, to me, I was frustrated with God because it's like, you see I'm being disappointed and I'm associating that disappointment with God. Like, as if he's the one causing the disappointment. But it's just like, Lord, you see what I'm going through. You see me trying and you can't even give me a little bit. Like, I can't just have like a little bit. Like, I don't have to go all the way or like have everything. I don't have to have my husband. But Lord, can I have something? Like, dang, at this age, can I have a little something? Like, what is the point in all this? And then I built up walls to men. Like, I was cracking up talking with one of my friends recently because, honestly, at this point, if a guy were to actually approach me or even try to be, like, serious, I feel like I'd be like, nah, you know what, never mind. Nah, fam. No, nope, I'm good. Because I'm so comfortable in my safety zone. Like, I feel safe. I feel comfortable here, like I live alone, I am used to being alone, I'm used to not being in a relationship, so it's comfy, it's like, I can just dream all day long, I don't actually have to have you in real life, which is so faulty and so not true, but that's what my mind had convinced me of because of how insecure I've become around relationships. And then I had to have a real talk with myself about where else these walls stem from. And I was actually talking with my mom about it. I realized that because of the way the church and church people typically talk about or don't talk about <laughs> sex, relationships, crushes, all that, because that conversation is typically so off the table that it leaves us all to kind of figure this thing out for ourselves. So for some people that looks like going out and sleeping with everybody and figuring it out like that. Whereas for me, it was because I'm, I've always been a rule follower. Like, they used to call me goody goody shoe shoes when I was little because I was always like, well, mommy said, well, daddy said, well, the rule is because that was me. I'm a rule follower. And so because of that, because, you know, my parents, I didn't want them to experience a lot of the disappointment, even embarrassment that I felt like some of the other parents were feeling that we witnessed when their kids would go off and do X, Y, Z or, you know, sleep around or end up pregnant and things like that. I didn't want my family to feel that. I wanted to honor them. I wanted to respect them with how uh, I carried myself in, with relationships and with men. But I took it to the extreme, y'all. It was like, oh, in order for me to not get into that, then I'll just stay away from it altogether. For a long time, I didn't even have guy friends. Like, I just wanted so badly to make sure that I didn't become a stereotypical uh, black female where everybody expects that I'm gonna go and have 12 kids, 12 baby daddies. Like, in order to avoid that, I just avoided it altogether. So I saw my, my parents as an amazing example, but it was never translated to me how they got there. I don't know how a regular relationship becomes this dynamic 30 plus year marriage. Like I couldn't make that connection because we just didn't talk about it. Like we just didn't talk about it. But all of that contributed to the walls. Like I've literally put up a wall to relationships, to vulnerability with a man. Like that is so, it became such a foreign concept for me that now I'm trying to get those things back at 25 and realizing like, okay, I'm grown. Like, I know the difference between right and wrong. I know what I can handle and what I can't handle. And I know that these things are good for me. Like, I, I don't want to live my life without them. So I'm trying to reclaim some of that stuff now. Now, I do believe that God has an intentional plan for our lives all the way down to our romantic lives. Um, I don't think any of this stuff, anything that I've experienced is a surprise to God. But at this stage, I'm trying to tease out like how much of my journey is because this is how God ordained it to be and planned for it to be. And how much of it is on me? Like, can I really say that I'm single, never been kissed, all that stuff at 25 because that's what God wanted for me? Or is some, did I play a role in some of that? You know, like what role did I play in what are these walls that I built up that maybe I could have experienced these things a little sooner if I didn't have these walls up so high. So what the heck am I doing about all this? I've a lot with you guys, we've talked about it, but it's like, okay, so where am I going from here at this stage of my experience, what am I doing with it? The main thing is that I'm forcing myself forcing myself it is so painful but I'm forcing myself to stay in discomfort 
And I'm doing it in baby steps. I'm not like throwing myself out to the deep end and being like, hey, you better swim, figure it out. But I am making myself do things that are outside of my comfort zone. For example, I am forcing myself to date. <laughs> I'm laughing because I don't know if we can really call it dating yet. I'm trying. That's a step. I'm trying, okay? Last in the fall, I think I talked a little bit about how I went on the Bumble date. I did get Bumble and I tried to do the whole like online dating thing. It was okay for the moment. I don't know if I'm going back to it. You can hear me talk about that in another video. But I'm also trying really hard to be open to when I am approached, which is a new thing, y'all. Like, I used to think that guy had a label on my forehead that said, do not talk to her. Because even though people would tell me, like, I'm popping, they would comment, you're beautiful, all this stuff, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay, but why the guys ain't coming for me then? Like, if I'm so popping out here and I'm just, oh my gosh, you're what every guy would want. Well, well, I don't think so because ain't none of them try to holler. So I really used to think, like, maybe, like, God has just put me behind invisible cloak. Like that one Harry Potter had, you know, on the movie. Like, maybe they just can't see me. I don't know what that is, but maybe they just can't see me. But since a few guys, you know, here and there now are trying to, it's really, it's, I mean, now as in like the last few weeks in 2019 y'all it's like everybody decided okay i'm gonna finally shoot my shot now let me not get ahead of myself but i'm just saying that to say those who do try to approach me i try to be more open instead of just being like nah i'm good i'm comfy i'm trying to be like okay let's let's sit with this a minute okay let's investigate could this be somebody that we would talk to or can we just be nice and say hello and have a conversation that that won't kill you, Gaby. It won't kill you. And I'm also trying to go out on the town a little bit more. Again, me and my apartment are best friends. Especially after spending all day at school. Oh, I'm good. Don't you worry about it. I'm just going to go home. <laughs> I don't have to go anywhere y'all. I don't have to go anywhere. But I do have graduate school friends who are like, they've been forcing me out a little bit more. So that's part of it is like going out, you know, dressing up. I used to always be dressed in undergrad because there was always something to be doing. Here I'm like, oh, me putting this face on for y'all is like, wow, makeup. Hello. <laughs> so I'm trying to do that a little bit more as well, which is all outside of my comfort zone. I'm also forcing myself to pray and journal specifically on the topic of relationships. And y'all, this is so hard for me which is crazy because like I talk to God about other stuff but it, it's hard to force myself to like okay get back into that I used to journal all the time about relationships oh my gosh in undergrad I had a thick I would go get it but that's doing the most but I had a thick like hardback journal where I literally used to be in there just blah, 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 about relationships I don't even do that no more I'm like for what <laughs> but I'm forcing myself to get back into that for sure and I realized part of that fear in there is because I'm like I'm it's like I'm scared to trust God with my desires with my family goals like you know saying out loud that I want a husband and six kids and a house and family traditions and all this stuff sounds really nice but I'm like you know if I give that to God and what if that's not even what happens I have to acknowledge that God's hands are the safest place for my desires to be like Oh, I love that. Like, that's the safest place for my de desires to be. Why would I feel like they're safer in my mind or in my heart? Like, that's probably why they ain't getting nowhere. I gotta go put them in God's hands. Another thing I'm doing is acknowledging the walls and barriers that I've built. Instead of just letting them exist and letting myself stay comfortable, I call them out. And then the last thing I want to do with this situation is I really want to encourage youth pastors, youth leaders, ministers, people who influence youth in the church we have to have these discussions and we have to talk about it and I'm also saying this to the parents my goal as a parent is like we start we being open about this stuff early we're establishing it early that vulnerability that conversation around sex and relationships realizing that these things are good that they are things that you should want that it's not weird for you to have these desires like having those conversations as early as possible so that we know it's normal it's good it's great then how do we get a grip on those things so that they don't control our lives and they don't lead us astray like talking to kids about sex and relationships will not make them go do it we have to get out of that mindset so to encourage me around talking to God about relationships and making sure to voice my visions my dreams my desires I have Habakkuk 2 and 2 uh, through verse 3 the amplified version and it says then the Lord answered me and said write the vision and engrave it plainly on clay tablets so that the one who reads it will run 
for the vision is yet for the appointed future time. It hurries toward the goal of fulfillment. It will not fail. Even though it delays, wait patiently for it. Let's run that back. Even though it delays, wait patiently for it because it will certainly come. It will not delay. And that to me means that we are right on schedule, y'all. Like, yes, there are probably some things that I did that, you know, have elongated this process in, in the human world. But in the spiritual realm, God ain't surprised by none of this. And I think this awakening that I'm having about my experience with relationships is part of the story. And I'm hoping it's part of the story for some of you that it helps you all get free if you're in a similar predicament. And can I say when the day comes, saints? When the day comes, we are all going to shout together. I'm calling Oprah, Obama. I'm calling Michelle. I'm calling Beyonce. I'm calling everybody because everybody needs to know. I got me a man. I got me a man. Come on, somebody. That sounds good rolling off my tongue. I just, I really like the sound of that. So to sum this all up, Saved, Single, and Left Behind will be a series that I'm starting right now on my channel. And I don't know how many episodes it's going to be. I don't know what all we're going to talk about. I'm really not sure yet, but I know that my story and my experience around relationships is something that needs to be told, and I'm hoping it will encourage some of you. So for my single sisters in Christ, my sissies, ah, you like that? That's cute, huh? Make sure you all tune in for the next episode so that we can all just get through this thing together. We can build our sisterhood and just encourage each other on this journey. And for the next episode, I want to do a Q&A based on this video. I'm sure a lot of you watching will have questions. I mean, I get questions all the time from people who know about it. So I'm assuming that you all will have questions as well. So whatever questions you have that you want me to answer on this topic or based on this video, something I shared, make sure you drop them in the description box. I'll also have some Q&A um, little stickers on my Instagram story throughout uh, this next week so that you can submit your questions for next week's video. So if there are other girls or women who are out there dealing with, you know, not having dates to homecoming and prom and not having a whole lot of attention and you know not having a boyfriend not being kissed for those who are going through that and feel like no one else gets it like no one else knows what I'm going through uh here I am hi it's me look at me here I am I know exactly what you're going through so that's the whole point about my transparency in this series that I'm putting on for you guys so we've come to the end of the first episode subscribe on your way out if you really enjoyed this hit the notification bell because we have so much to talk about ladies on this subject make sure you share if you know somebody going through this or this is their story and they don't have anyone to turn to or you felt like you couldn't offer them the kind of advice that they needed make sure you share it share it with your friend your mentor Mentee, your mentor whoever don't forget to give me a big thumbs up if you really enjoyed watching this and don't forget to throw your questions down in the comment section before you hop in the comment section or my dms check the ground rules don't y'all forget the ground rules i'm not playing them we're serious don't play me i love you but please remember the ground rules please please all right sissies i've said enough i'll catch you in the next video bye